When working with Studio One or any DAW for that matter, it's definitely best to have an external audio interface, which is going to allow you to achieve lower latency. It's going to give you better preamps and allow you to connect condenser mics and dynamic mics that have XLR connections. But if you don't have access to an external audio interface and you're stuck with the Windows Audio, I just wanted to make a tutorial that covers some of the settings that you should be aware of. I do receive a lot of comments and questions about people having issues with using Studio One and Windows Audio. Now, before we get started with the tutorial, just know that I do, if you're having issues or would like to speed up the learning curve for working with Studio One, I do offer one-on-one -on -one training. You can find more information on that in the description or through the pinned comment below. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings that it's important to be aware of if you're gonna use Windows Audio. So first of all, when you launch Studio One, you'll be taken to the start page and by default, you may, uh, it will probably select Windows Audio automatically if you don't have an external audio device connected. But if it's not there, uh, you can just click on this area here. You'll open up the options menu and the audio setup tab. And in the audio device here, you can click on the drop down menu and select Windows Audio there. Below that, you'll see your device block size, which is basically the latency that you have with your current settings. You'll see your sample rate and the times and samples for your input and output latency. Now, at the very bottom, this is something to be aware of because I have a lot of people say that they're not able to say they're watching tutorials on YouTube and trying to follow along in Studio One, but then they lose their audio on YouTube or any other website that's trying to play audio. So if you don't have this checked, then this is most likely the problem. So if you don't have this release audio device and background checked, if you have a browser, web browser open and you're trying to watch YouTube videos or something else and you don't have audio, this is probably the reason why. So you'll want to be sure that you have this checked if you'd like to be able to work with Studio One and have audio for your other applications when you switch to them. Now, making our way back up to the top, if we click on the control panel, we can access some other settings that are important for the Windows Audio. We can adjust the latency here. On my system, 40 seems to be the best uh, setting for me. If I go any lower than that, then my computer struggles a bit. Now, we do have this exclusive mode, and in theory, if we check this, it should allow you to achieve a lower latency. But for me, I'm getting an error that it's not able to enter into exclusive mode. This was never an issue on Windows 10. I'm currently using Windows 11. So if you're still on 10, then maybe you'll be able to do that. If you'd like to get a lower latency, then try out the exclusive mode and lower that. But, the, but again, with this setting, Studio One is gonna have complete control over your audio, so you won't be able to use any other applications or have them play back audio when you're using the exclusive mode. Now down at the bottom, we have our playback devices and recording devices. So you can then select directly within these areas which you would like to use for your playback or your recording device. So if you have a USB microphone, this is another question that I get a lot. How can I choose that or use that? If you have that connected before you launch Studio One, you should see that USB mic here. And so you can then select that mic and use that for your recording and your playback. You can use the uh, speakers on your laptop or most likely you'll have headphones connected and uh, you'll use that. Now down at the very bottom here, we have manage audio devices. When we click on that, it's gonna take us to the properties for our audio card that Windows is making use of. So here we have speakers, Synaptics Audio. That's what I'm using for the playback device. Now, if we click once to select that and come to the properties. Some things to take note of are in the advanced tab, depending on the audio card that you're using and the device driver that you have, you can come in here and choose a different bit depth and sample rate. You can test that here and you can allow applications to take exclusive control over the, the device, which is something that would need to be checked if you want to use this exclusive mode. But again, for me, that's not working. You can set up hardware acceleration, which in theory should give you better performance. But if you're having problems, this could be something that you could deselect to see if that resolves those issues. Something else to be aware of is the single and signal enhancements. 
This is going to color the sound that you're hearing back from Studio One. So if you're trying to do some mixing or something like that, just know that when you have these enhancements that Windows provides, it's, it's going to alter the sound. So this may not be a good setting to have selected. If you want to hear uh, as flat as a response of playback of your audio, if you're going to be doing some mixing or something like that. Also, this last tab, the spatial sound, if you're going to be using headphones and you want to hear just an unprocessed signal, you may want to go ahead and turn that off there. I'm going to cancel out of here and let's come to the recording tab and then we will select the microphone array. Now I'm using a laptop and my laptop has two separate microphones that record stereo input. But if you're again using a USB mic, then you can select that here and click on the properties for it. Take a look at the enhancements to be sure there's nothing crazy going on there. Coming to the advanced, you can also come here and select a different bit depth, bit depth and sample right there. We also have the exclusive mode settings also at the bottom. But I'll again cancel out of here and we can close out these properties. Let's close out the audio device options. Let's cancel out of the main options menu and I'm gonna come to the song. I've got a song set up here. So I'm gonna press T to add an audio track, just a mono audio, I'll click okay. Now here in the track column, this is where we can choose the input that we'd like to use. So if you have that USB mic that you're using, you can click on this down arrow to select that here. Now I have input L and input R because as I mentioned, I have two microphones built into my laptop screen. So you can choose either one of those here. Now something else that I could also do if you're using a laptop that has stereo mics, then if I press T to bring up the add tracks dialog again, I could choose stereo recording, click OK. And then now we see input L and R, that's just the left mic and right mic at the top of my laptop screen. I'd be recording from both of those within this mode. So if I enter into record, then we can see I'm recording a stereo from those two mics. Coming back up to the top with just the left mic, entering into record, I'm just gonna record from that one mic there. All right. Now, one other thing when we're looking at these inputs is that they're going to have these default names, input L, input R. You may want to change this to be something that uh, is a bit better. So at the very bottom, we have audio input output setup. And then here we have the input L, R, L, and R. You can double click on these to input any name that you'd like. If you have a USB mic and you want to put it in the model of that mic, you could do that there. So on the left-hand side, we see the names that will be shown when we make our selection in the track column here within Studio One. Up at the very top, these are gonna be the names of the physical inputs that are uh, available on the device or the audio card that you're using or the USB mic. And if you're having issues with the audio and you're not getting audio, just be sure that within the routing matrix here that you have the M in this field here. So for instance, the input R, the right microphone on my laptop, if I take away that M and apply that, okay, and then here we see we have a signal for the left input, but if I were to change this to the right, then we see we have nothing. And that's because within the routing matrix that has been disabled. If we come to the input output setup again, and then put that M, this just means mono, uh, back in there so that this physical input, the right physical input is then routed or connected to input R. Apply that. Okay. Now our audio has returned. Coming back to the input output setup. Just keep in mind that the adjustments that you make here or the naming is going to be for this specific song that you're working in. If you'd like to retain that setup for every song that you create in the future, then you'll want to choose the make default button uh, down here at the bottom. Also coming to the outputs, you can double click and rename that as well and make a default setting here. All right, I'll cancel out of the routing menu. And the last thing that I want to touch on is a bit of a bug that is within Studio One and I think it gives a lot of people problems. 
in that they lose audio within Studio One, particularly if you're working with video, you're trying to compose to video. So if we, right now, if I turn the monitoring back on, we can hear that everything is working properly. If I open up the video player, um, we can see down in the bottom right hand corner, we have a little audio thing here showing that it's not muted. But as soon as I import a video, I'll just choose this one here from my desktop, it's still unmuted and we still have audio. But sometimes this will automatically be muted when you import a video and it will be red. So now when I come back, there's no more audio. Even if I try to play back the audio that I recorded, we see we have we have signal going out, we have signal on the master there, but nothing. And the reason for that is this. Okay, so this here, I don't know why it's been like this for forever, but this has been an issue for a long time. When this is muted, if I right click on the speaker icon here and come to the volume mixer, this is gonna look a little bit different again because I'm on Windows 11. But if we come down to the bottom here, we can see that the app volume for Studio One is muted. If you are on Windows 10, just right click on the speaker icon and go to the volume settings, and you'll find that your speaker, your volume has been muted for Studio One as well. So I don't know why that's like that. But again, if I unmute here on the video player, let's turn monitoring off on that. Come back to the volume mixer you can see it's been unmuted here. So if you've lost audio, this is something else to check out, especially if you're working with the video player. Okay, so if you're stuck with Windows Audio or you're on the road and don't have access to your audio device and you've been having issues or wondering about some settings, I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.